multiple things. And on the other side, I put a little thank you. I know, I work in mysterious ways. Currently, we're using setting one of, in the ELW hymnal. We use this usually at Christmas and at Easter. I program it in so for those Christmas and Easter crowd who go into hibernation between the holidays, um, they will recognize it when they come to church those two or three times a year. Um, but again, feel free to invite people to church. They're welcome. I just changed the sign again this morning and updated everything. Um, as often as I can, I try to include the choir anthem in the bulletin. And I know that some people have asked for the text or whatnot. The question is, I, is every, every Sunday morning is like Christmas. I never know what choir members I'm going to have. And it makes a difference in what we sing because I try to find pieces that are relevant to the readings as well as the season of litur liturgy that we're in, as well as... Am I going to be the only guy this morning? Do we have multiple sopranos? Is it only going to be two of us? So that's why often I can't put the choir anthem in the program because I don't know until Sunday morning. Um, but it's all out downstairs. Uh, and of course, our hymns, before I got here, which believe it or not, it's been 21 years that I've been here. I know I'm still new. Um, <laughs> They did not used to sing communion hymns, there was often just instrumental music. So we sing more communion, we sing more hymns than we ever did, um, but we're still trying to respect everybody's trying to get to coffee hour at 11. If we go too late, overtime kicks in, there's extra expenses, it's just, you don't want to go there. So that's why we often try and do the text and the verses that are most relevant to the liturgy and the readings of that day. If you have any other questions about the liturgy, please feel free to see Pastor Mac, me. If you have any complaints, see Pastor Mac. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> People of God, good morning. 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 Get the pen slipped out of the And I hope everybody is doing well. Happy, happy Easter. Happy Easter. You know, um, Lynn, uh, where, 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 wherever, uh, I think Linda is in, in uh, Linda Coleman is in, in, in the back uh, getting ready to light the candles during the break. She reminded me, I, I mean, I mean, I remembered, uh, but she, re I remembered, but she reminded me, that doesn't sound right. She, she, she reminded me. <laughs> That, 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 that Easter is not a day. Easter is a season in the church. It's a season in the church. So um, we have to sort of like keep that in mind. That I mean, we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday that we come. But in particular, during the season of Easter, uh, at that time between uh, Easter Sunday and Pentecost Sunday, it's a day that we uh, sort of like, you know, we still have... Easter decorations and uh, reminders that, of, of, of the resurrection in the church. So if you still see that um, in, in the church, it's just to remind us that Easter is not just a day. Easter is, a, is an entire season. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, um, friends in Christ, many of you already know uh, that Fran Sykes uh, passed away uh, two, about a week and a half ago. And her uh, funeral is going to be here at Holy Trinity on Saturday at 11, at 11 o'clock. So Fran Sykes' funeral is going to be on Saturday at 11. The day before uh, is going to be the viewing at Thompson Funeral Home in Red Bank. And that's going to be...
from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. So for those of you uh, who, uh, for whatever reason, can't make it to the uh, funeral, uh, you have an opportunity to uh, meet and, and greet and pay your condolences to the family at Thompson. And for those of you who um, uh, may not be able to attend the uh, viewing, you can attend the funeral here at 11 o'clock. So I just wanted, on Saturday, so I just wanted to share that bit of information uh, with you. And um, I also wanted to share, for those of you who uh, may not have known, uh, uh, Dan and Tammy Grillin's daughter, Amanda, uh, she, I guess you could say she, she was pregnant <laughs> because she had, she had the baby. <laughs> she had the baby and um, uh, uh, because he's uh, born a, a, a month early, there are some issues, so he's in NICU right now, uh, but Tammy informed me that he should possibly be coming home uh, either today or tomorrow. So I just ask that you would keep uh, uh, Tammy and, and, and Dan and, uh, and Mom Amanda and Dad Dan and baby Dan, <laughs> Daniel, in your prayers this morning. So uh, a so, uh, uh, lot, lot of sad news, but also good news going around in the church this morning. So um, uh, Peter, oh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Chris, you have, you want to share something with us? I want to share more good news. <laughs> uh, we didn't get the final results in time to actually for the Lenten challenge to actually be in the bulletin, but Dina, always going above and beyond, printed a little uh, insert in your bulletin and said purple, you know, I guess uh, appropriate to the season, but we did great. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, original goal was $5,000 from the congregation plus a $5,000 matching. The congregation uh, raised about 8,600, 8,700. So that's fantastic. It's like 172% of what was expected. And the matching fund people came in even a little bit higher than the 5,000. So altogether, we have um, almost uh, $13,800. So that will go toward, so we, yeah, we should <laughs> So those funds will be going to help us in several ways. One, we'll start building up reserves uh, for a rainy day, something happens. We'll be able to keep our cash flow so that, you know, for example, this month, April, will be, I can guarantee, will not be as good as last month. Last month we had the Lent Challenge, we had Easter, and we had five Sundays. <laughs> April, after the big celebration, although we're still in the Easter season, mm -hmm. as Pastor said, only four uh, Sundays, people will be on vacation. So we know it'll be less, but I know everybody will continue to be faithful in their giving, and I think we're in a, in a great uh, position. And I want to thank everybody who, uh, who worked to make this happen. So thank you. Friends of Christ, I invite you to please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter rebirth and joy. Amen. Here is water, the new life of rebirth, alleluia, immersed in the promises of baptism. Let us give thanks for what God has done. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning. Your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld the verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian eunuch entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love. 
freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.
by the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 The congregation may be seated for the reading and hearing of God's word this morning. Today, 
This is the word of the Lord.
Would you believe it? I mean, I, the, the, the scientists say that uh, a, a 4.8 earthquake happening here on the East Coast was, is unheard of. It has never happened before, at least in the history of when records have been kept. But imagine someone coming up to you and saying that, you know what, there was a, uh, there was a, a, a pretty sizable earthquake this morning. Would you believe them? Well, maybe you possibly would, because you heard it from so many other folks that said, you know what, there was an earthquake this morning. Or you may, or you may be believe because you, you, you saw it on TV, and you saw uh, video footage of different areas around the tri-state area where the uh, plates and, 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 uh, and pictures uh, frames were being knocked off the wall. You just might believe if someone said it to you. You just might believe if someone says that they experienced it. Well, today in our today in our gospel text this morning, we 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 we. We are invited to look upon this story of uh, the risen Christ appearing to the disciples, and Thomas is not with them. And when Thomas comes and they, they say, "We've seen, we've seen the, the we've seen the risen Lord," Thomas says to the disciples, "Unless, unless I see him with my very own eyes, I'm not going to believe." In our reading, it's Easter. In our reading, it's Easter Sunday evening. And it says that the disciples are behind locked doors, possibly in the same place where they shared the Last Supper with Jesus in the upper room. And our text says that they are locked, they're locked behind these doors in, in, in fear of the Jews in fear of the Jews. I, I, I like to say they, they're locked behind doors and, and, and frightened and scared of the Jewish leaders, not, not, not the Jews. Sometimes when we read that, um, sometimes when we read Jews, we read it as a whole, and, and sometimes it's been used uh, to produce anti-Semitism uh, uh, amongst Jewish people, but that's why I say it's some Jewish leaders. And who are those Jewish leaders? The ones that the ones that executed Jesus. They're behind these locked doors. Possibly fearing for their lives, thinking that these Jewish leaders now might come for them. And possibly crucify them just like they crucified Jesus. And as they're behind these locked doors, all of a sudden, the risen Jesus comes and appears to them and says to them, peace, peace be with you. And then after he says this, he breathes on them and, and he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. But as all this is going on, unfortunately, unfortunately, Thomas He's not, Thomas isn't with them. And when Thomas comes to the upper room, by this time, Jesus has disappeared. Thomas comes and, and the disciples say, we have we've seen the Lord. But you weren't here, Thomas. You, you, missed, you missed everything. Jesus was here. And Thomas says to the disciples, unless I see with my very own eyes, I'm not going to believe. Unless, um, unless I put my, my, my finger in, 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 in his hands and my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe anything you guys say. Well, the next Sunday, the disciples are again in the upper room, but this time Thomas is with them. And as they, or possibly the doors are locked again, 
Jesus, again, just like the week before, Jesus appears to them and, and says to the disciples, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then he, and then he, he goes up to Thomas. And, and, and Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas, it's, it, it's really me. And, 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 and if, 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 you, if you don't believe, put here, put your finger in, in the nail prints in my hand and put your, put your hand in my side. It's really me, Thomas. Don't, don't doubt. Instead, instead believe. Or in, or, or in the Greek, it, 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 it reads, don't, uh, don't be unbelieving, but instead believe. And Jesus says to Thomas and the other disciples, after Thomas says, my Lord and my God, Tom, Jesus says to them, have you, he says to them, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who, blessed are those who have not seen, but have yet come to believe. Believe. Like last week, like last week in our gospel text of coming from Mark's gospel, that the resurrection story of Jesus, I think, you know, I said that the women sometimes, they, they get a bad rap because they flew away in, in fear, away from the uh, empty tomb. I think, I think sometimes Thomas gets a, a, a bad rap in the story this morning. When uh, he, he's sometimes referred to as, 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 as doubting, as doubting Thomas. But you know, you know, Thomas was a he was a pretty rough guy. Thomas was a pretty bad dude. When when it, when it, when it was when Jesus wanted to go to Jerusalem and all the other disciples were like, "Oh Jesus, we don't want to go." It was it was Thomas who who said to Jesus, "You know what, Jesus? Uh, let us let us go to Jerusalem with you to die with you." You know, so Thomas was a Thomas was a pretty a, a pretty rough character. So. I think that, that uh, throughout history, that, that, that term or that title, the Doubting Thomas, it, 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 it shouldn't have um, been given to him. I, I, I think instead of uh, Doubting Thomas, I think Thomas's name should be, or his title should be referred to as Thomas the Realist. Thomas the Realist. I mean, that, that's sort of what, what strikes me in our story this morning. Because Thomas, he just wanted to experience what the other disciples had experienced in that first encounter with the risen Christ. What strikes me, what strikes me about Thomas is even in the midst of what we may say is doubt, in many ways, he reminds me of he reminds me of, 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 of humankind. How sometimes in our own faith walks and in our own faith journeys, sometimes we have times of doubt, don't we? We have, we have times of doubt, uh, uh, believing that, that, that God is with us, especially during difficult times, during troubling times, during hard times. And, and we may cry out, God, where are you? Jesus, I thought you said you would always be with me. And then Jesus comes to us. He comes to us in our fear. He comes to us in our uncertainty. He comes to us in our doubt. And he comes to us right where we are saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. I'm with you with, with, in whatever you might be dealing with. Peace be with you. I'm with you whatever you may be dealing with and going through. 
and whatever might be troubling you. Peace be with you. Maybe doubt, maybe doubt is not the opposite of faith. Maybe doubt is, is a part of faith. Maybe doubt is an essential part of being faithful. I mean, look at our Gospels. We, we, we see folks in our text this morning who doubted. The disciples, they doubted that it was the risen Christ right before them until Jesus said to them, it's really me. Look at my hands and look at my side. Jesus says to Jesus says to Thomas this morning, Thomas, it's really, really me. Put your finger here in my hand. Put your hand in my side. It's really me. Don't doubt, but instead believe. I need blessing, Lord. I guess in these words, Jesus is really blessing Thomas and blessing all. Blessing all who are going to come to faith. Blessing all who have faith in him. Bless, blessing those who have not seen, but have yet come to believe. Last Friday, the earth shook. A 4.8 earthquake. And it really, really happened. Friends in Christ, the tomb is still empty, and Jesus has been raised. So my message to you and myself this morning is blessed are those who have not seen, who have not seen, but have yet come to believe in the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Could you please stand and Join in singing O Sons and Daughters, verses 1 through 4. <laughs>
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Church. We acknowledge the baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witnessed to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all in need. We especially pray for Phyllis, Gail, Terry, Linda, Morris, Joe, Elena, Dean, Allison, Laura, Fiona, and Maria. We pray for healing for Kathy, Michelle, and Daniel. We also pray for the Sykes family as they mourn the death of Fran. We pray for Tammy and Dan Grillen, who celebrate the birth of their first grandchild, Daniel. We pray for people around the world living in places of violence and war, for all victims of gun violence, for refugees and immigrants and those who come to their aid, for the unity of this church and its mission, those struggling with grief, sickness, or injury, and those who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude of God for the lives of those who now rest in you, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all whose lives have been given in faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus the Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. 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 People of God, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And now may we share Christ's love with one another.
to be your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true God. Amen. People of God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. So and so with Mary Magdalene and, and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. <laughs>
Friends of Christ, I invite you to please stand as you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. 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 And I think today was a, what, was one of those uh, hot, hot, hot luck uh, uh, coffee, is. coffee there's, hours. There's lots of stuff, and thanks to Chris. Um, the, if, if you don't know, when thank you for contributing. Um, I get here around 8 in the morning after going to the gym, which my day started out right. I saw Roger at the gym. <laughs> As I was coming out, that smiling face was right there, and I knew it was going to be a good Sunday. He was risen! <laughs> he was risen! Roger's very faithful about the gym. Right. Um, but uh, I put out and start the coffee and set them things up, and then Chris Ford comes in and helps, and y'all drop stuff off, so that's how coffee hour happens. I will say, there's nothing, or there was no one signed up for coffee hours through June. Um, so if you can host or team up with someone, that would be great. Please sign up in the Red Book. Um, also, we're back on with weekly flowers yes. if you want to contribute. That also is in the Red Book. Um, and thanks again to everybody who assisted. I challenge you, um, take the bulletin home. This is why it's important to sing. Every single hymn today quoted the scripture that we studied today. The anthem <laughs> quoted the scripture. The sign has been updated. Everything fits together. It's not serendipitous. We spend a lot of time trying to plan and sync things up and choose hymns where it meets the readings and where everything makes a complete message. So take the bulletin home. Sing the hymns, please, and thank you if you do, because it's an extension of the readings and of the sermon. It all comes together and it clicks. Uh, have a great week, and if you want a lily, oh take, yes, take a take, lily, take a lily. Yeah. Um, and if you can plant it, otherwise we'll try and get them in the ground or feed the deer here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. And as we, uh, all, all, all throughout the, the, the season, as I shared, not just the day, the season of Easter, um, you'll hear that uh, wonderful Easter proclamation, Alleluia, Christ is risen. People of God, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrecting power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.